Hi guys, Olive here, here today to talk to you about what I plan on reading in October of 2018. My reading plans for October are a little bit different than they are for a normal month, but before I get into talking about why that is the case, I will start off by talking about what is consistent across all my TBRs, and those are my picks off of my Young Professional and my Classics TBRs. So my pick off of my Young Professional TBR for the month will be Too Big to Fail by Andrew Ross Sorkin. Just recently I read The Big Short by Michael Lewis, which talked about the setup for the global financial crisis in 2008. It is my impression that this book picks up where The Big Short left off, so where The Big Short was focused on the build-up to the financial crisis, how we got ourselves into that mess in the first place. This book is going to talk about what happened during the free fall and what Washington did to bail out the financial system. Again, if you know anything about me, you know I work in financial services. I think it's very important for me to be as educated as possible about the financial crisis, and this is part of my ongoing project to do so. And moving on to my pick from my classics TBR, you will already be able to tell that this month is a little bit different than normal because I have two books that I'm reading off of my classics TBR this month. Next month, November, will be nonfiction November, during which I read exclusively nonfiction during the entire month, and I do not want to fall behind on my classics TBR. So this month I'm going to pick up two to be able to keep up the pace. So the first of two picks off of my classics TBR will be Dragon Wick by Anya Seton. In this book, 18-year-old Miranda has grown very bored of her everyday life and is thrilled when a letter from a distant relative arrives inviting her to come stay at his very gothic, mysterious mansion. I know Brie Hill really loved this one, and this is precisely the time of year when I like to read gothic tales. And speaking of gothic tales, I am also planning to read North Anger Abbey by Jane Austen. I set this one aside specifically to read in October for two different reasons. The first being that on my Classics TBR video that I did at the end of last year, someone commented saying just how great of a read it is for the fall month, since it is very gothic in tone. And also, I wanted this to be my pick for Victober. As hard as it is to believe, after I read this book this month, I will only have one more Jane Austen novel left to read before I've read her entire catalog. I suppose that gives you some spoilers about what's going to be on my 2019 Classics TBR. Now moving on to all of the other books that I am planning to read in October. The first one of those is the Devil in the White City by Eric Larson. This was one that I talked about in my 10 most popular books on my TBR list. I mentioned in that video that I was hoping to read at least three off of that list before the year was over. I have been making pretty good progress on that goal and I would like to continue on doing so. I'm actually going to be buddy reading this one with my good friend Devin over at Indie Insomniac. We've been talking a lot for the past two years and yet have never done a buddy read together. We were talking one day on Voxer about how disparate our reading tastes are and how difficult it would be to find a book that we would both enjoy reading together. And then he out of the blue mentioned this one, not knowing that I was already hoping to read this one this year. This is an intensely popular piece of nonfiction, but in case you have not heard of it, this is a book that takes place during the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago during which a serial killer was on the loose. This is an extremely popular book, not just on Goodreads, but I also feel like it's very popular here on BookTube. I feel like a lot of booktubers have already read this, and I'm surprised I haven't, being the nonfiction aficionado that I am. The next two books I'm planning to read in October, I was actually sent for review by publishers, which is a little bit unusual for me. Again, this reading month is kind of odd. I was contacted by Counterpoint Press, and they asked me if I would like to receive Improvement by Joan Silber. I obviously said yes. I was intrigued by this one because it is focused on a single mother living in New York City. I feel like I don't read a whole lot of books where there is a single parent. If you do not know this about me, I was raised by a single mother, and so I was definitely interested to give this one a try. It's only just over 200 pages long. I feel like this one might be a good candidate for Dewey's 24-hour readathon, coming on October 20th. Mark your calendars. And one that I requested from Greystone Books quite a while ago, actually, is Diving for Seahorses, Exploring the Science and Secrets of Human Memory by Hilda and Ilva Ostby. I wanted to wait until we were a little bit closer to publication day before picking this one up, but now that this one is going to be published this month, I thought this would be a good time for me to read it. As the subtitle may have told you, this one is all about the human memory and is written by a pair of Norwegian sisters, one of whom is a neuropsychologist, the other one is a writer. I absolutely love reading books on memory. I find it absolutely fascinating, but I think the last book I read on memory 
was Moonwalking with Einstein, which was back in 2016. I am overdue for a good one, so I cannot wait to dive in. And the last book that I am formally considering reading during the month of October is Bellman in Black by Diane Setterfields. It was a last minute choice for me during September to join in on a read-along that Katie from Books and Things was hosting of The Thirteenth Tale by Diane Setterfield, which was another book off of my 10 most popular books on my TBR list. Since I have not yet posted my September wrap-up, which will be coming soon, you have not had the opportunity to hear me gush about how much I loved The Thirteenth Tale. I loved it so much I could not stop reading. I blew ahead of Katie's schedule. I have heard from multiple sources that this book, also by Diane Setterfield, is not nearly as good, but still, I want to give it a try. This book is about a man named William Bellman, who as a boy makes a reckless decision to aim his slingshot at a rook resting on a branch, which kills the bird instantly. Later in William Bellman's life, years after this incident has occurred, people who are important to him start to die. And at each of their funerals, a mysterious stranger in black appears and just smiles at him. Eventually, this stranger approaches him with a very strange bargain in tow. I am heeding the warnings of everyone who says that this one is not as good as The Thirteenth Tale, but I am willing to give it a try. Now, as you may have noticed as this video has gone on, there are bits and pieces that are a little bit different than what I normally do, not that there's ever a formula to my TBRs. But the thing that makes this TBR a lot different than all my other TBRs is the next thing I'm going to tell you. But to keep the mystique going, I have two things to tell you before going any further. The first of those is how I look at my monthly TBR. When I craft my monthly TBR, I am almost always being overly ambitious. I consider my monthly TBRs to be more like a menu of options. As I recently said in the finish the book tag, if I don't make a monthly TBR for myself, I will end up picking up 10 different books and not finishing anything. It's important for me to have structure, but I like to provide myself with a lot of options. I do my best to try to get through my monthly TBR every month, if only because I know I come to you guys with these TBR videos and then you're interested to know what my thoughts are on the books come wrap up time, but I don't always get to all of them. The second thing I need to stress, an emphasis on stress, is that this has been the busiest, most chaotic year of my life so far. It has just been one of those years where the hits just keep on coming. I don't talk about a lot of it here on this channel because I'm talking about books and not my life but just know that. The reason why I told you both of those things is that I have a little collection of books left over from all of my previous TBRs throughout the year that have been accumulating in a pile here in my reading room. It is something that I have started to refer to as the TBR graveyard. And every time I walk into my reading room, I am confronted with those books and feel a deep sense of guilt. And so starting in October, probably skipping November because nonfiction November, and hopefully picking up in December, I am going to try my hardest to get through some of the books in the TBR graveyard. I am not going to show you each and every book on this pile. You have seen them in previous TBR videos, plus I don't want this video to be that long, but I will show you a portion of the pile. Here is some of it. As you can see, a lot of them have bookmarks in them. Some of them I've gotten like a hundred pages into and then just abandoned for no good reason. I was excited to put all of these on my TBR, so I want to try to read them. So any of the books on this stack are fair game for this month or any month going forward. I'm hoping to at least read maybe three or four of them. Some of them it's just a matter of picking up where I left off, which I'm pretty confident I will remember my place, and then just finish the book. So those are all the books that I am planning to read during the month of October, including a little bit of catch up before nonfiction November rolls around. If you've read any of these books, if you've heard of them, or if you're now interested in reading them after hearing me talk about them, I would love to hear from you in the comment section below. Also, let me know if at this point in the year you also have a TV or graveyard. You can come chat with me in the comment section below, or you can find me on a variety of different places on social media. The links to all of my profiles are linked in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I will see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.